Hello. Welcome to Connie Martinson Talks Books. Have you, or is there someone in your family with a camcorder? And suddenly, you know, they, they decided to write a three-act play that they would put on film. And then they said, gee, it's good enough. I'd love to go to a film festival with it. Well, this is the book you get for them. It is called Film Festivals. Almost everything any filmmaker wants to know, this is a book for them. It's written by my two guests, Rona Edwards and Monica Skirbelis. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. And it's published by Michael Weiss Production. Yeah. And I have to say about Michael Weiss, it's like he is doing a college or a graduate course on every aspect of film in the books that he's publishing. But in this, he has what I would call a number one bestseller. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're, we're very, very, very proud of uh, the Complete Filmmaker's Guide to Film Festivals. Well, you have put everything in, including what most people don't even know. Get clearances. If you're going to shoot something and say, well, this will make a film, here is the book that will tell you what you need, what sort of clearances, and what to take to a festival. So let's begin with how did it start? Well, you know, Monica and I have been working together for a very long time. We started teaching at UCLA Extension and uh, basically uh, teaching feature film development, which was uh, the first book that mm -hmm. we wrote, which was, uh, that dealt with that. Uh, Monica's been very much involved in uh, film festivals since she was in Universal. You could probably talk yeah, when I, when I worked about Yeah, when I worked at Universal Pictures, I was there for 10 years, and I used to go to the Sundance Film Festival, and I would look for young, mm -hmm. young talent. Yeah. And I would go to the film schools, and I would watch the, the thesis films coming out of all the film schools. And so that's what really got my interest in short films. And then uh, when I left the studio, I got involved with the Big Bear Lake International Film Festival. And so I've been programming films for them for the last 13 years. But uh, this is everything that most people do not know. True. This is yeah. true. And even people who think they know are going to get something yeah. out of this because it gives them a whole road map of what they, they need to do. The interesting thing is when we were writing the other book on feature development and, and so forth, we started our own workshops online called ESE for Edward Skirbelis mm -hmm. Entertainment film workshops online yeah. and we have four signature workshops one of them being based on the first book but uh, and another called creating a production company let me just say oh sure first book is I liked it didn't love it right yeah <laughs> screenplay <laughs> development from the inside out yeah and that's in the and second that's in the second edition and it's yeah. probably gonna be in a third very soon. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. um, so after we did that, we were we, we created these workshops, and uh, our our popular workshops are the one based on the first book, another one called Creating a Production Company, and then the third one being Maneuvering Film Festivals. And actually, okay. that was really the origin of this book. We created this four week and would still do it yeah. uh, online a workshop, and from that we decided, you know. Everyone that would come and take this workshop would say, if only I had had taken this before yeah. I submitted my film. If only, if only. Yeah. I said, there's a book in this. Yeah, it was yeah. a natural you know, progression. It was a yeah. natural thing for us to make as our next book. Right. So Doing the research, because not all film festivals are the same. The same way, I did not know, what is that, 400,000? No, 4,000 4, plus. 4,000 plus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> festivals around the world. Correct. Yeah, and 164 Jewish film festivals yes. I didn't even know about. <laughs> and, and probably more. Yeah. <laughs> <We're speaking. laughs> Another one has just popped up. I mean, you, <laughs> can, you can throw a stone and you can hit a film festival, you know, like in Los Angeles every weekend. <laughs> and you have to have a certain amount of, and I thought it was great, you go through what you need financially to go to each, uh, or pretty much, s festivals. Yeah, well, you know, it's important. One of the... Um, top, I guess, mistakes that filmmakers will make, and we do a whole lecture on the top five mistakes that uh, filmmakers make, you know, upon yeah. entering film festivals. One is that they don't plan financially for film festivals in yeah. general, and it should be included in their budget right from the get-go when yeah. they are producing the movie, not after. You don't want to think about it after the fact. You want to think about yeah. it during. And you also have to think about something as simple as having postcards made. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's, the marketing is so important. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, business cards, postcards, having a poster. Yeah. I mean, it's all so important because you really have to get the word out about your film. 
let's start with the first. What is your logline? Oh. What is your film about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, logline is one or two sentences that basically synopsizes your movie. But what people don't realize, they're not easy to write because you want to also whet somebody's yeah. appetite. So you want to use that logline not only to pitch your projects, but you mm -hmm. also want to use it when we're as film festivals are concerned for number one, submitting your film, number two, uh, the, the it, festival it, program. No. Yeah, it has to entice the, the reader who's reading the program guide to want to see your film. And so you need to capture your film, you know, in this yeah. one or two sentences very quickly. Because ultimately you want to get an audience for your yeah. film. And there is, you said there is online a website with, that you can almost register your film on. Oh, and without, the, yeah. Yes, withoutabox.com. Yeah. yeah. Most filmmakers will know about withoutabox.com. It's a... Uh, pretty much an all-encompassing site for free for the filmmakers, not free for the festivals. Yeah. Um, and you can basically not only upload your mm -hmm. entry forms, uh, your log line, mm -hmm. your cast and crew, your, basically your yeah. press kit and so forth up online that any programmer from any festival can have access to if they're part of Without a Box. And I would venture to say yeah. everyone is part of it. But there's also a European uh, version of it, a smaller version called the Short Film Depot. And some festivals only use that one. That are in Europe as well. Oh, oh. You tell me though. about Cannes Film Festival. It has a short film. I only thought it was for big names, Tom Cruise or uh, Clint Eastwood having a film there. Yeah. No, it, there's a lot more to it, including writing. Yeah, there's a short film corner, and they have close to 3,000 films in a market there. And uh, you, what you do is you, there's about 50, 50 cubicles, and you, you sit down at these cubicles with a computer and headphones, and you sit there and you just like go through all the films, yeah. and you watch all the films. I work with the American Pavilion's Emerging Filmmaker Showcase down at the Cannes yeah. Film Festival, and so it's like you, know, you can go and find all of the films that are under the umbrella of the American Pavilion. It's just a great way to you know, see films. And also, that's a way of networking. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, networking is probably one of the mistakes a lot of filmmakers make as well, not knowing how to do so, not knowing how yeah. to have that calling card, not just promoting uh, themselves and, and their film, but maybe their next film, yeah. or meeting other filmmakers with like mind that maybe they'll end up working together uh, yeah. in the future with. So there's a lot that you can accomplish at a film festival besides just the film that you might have or uh, have in the film festival or else... Uh, as a, just a festival goer, someone who loves films. Yeah, yeah screenwriters but, can have a great time at film festivals. Yeah, that, yeah. Well, where you said at Sundance is a screenwriters award. Well, they they have the at Sundance they have the screenwriters lab. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, they do give out a screen writing award. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure I saw it here. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Was it one of the other well, festivals? Well, there's a, a lot of festivals have other components to it. Yeah. They will have the film part. They will have a, maybe a screenwriting competition. They might even, like South by Southwest, has a whole music component as well. Yeah. So uh, they're a lot of fun to go to just to have fun and see films that, you know, a lot of times mm -hmm. film festivals will present films that you wouldn't normally get to see. Yeah. They may not always be the Hollywood big tent poles that are out there. Some of them will have them as opening night yeah. films or closing night films. Yeah. But all the films in between are films from all over the world that you might not get a chance to ever really see. Yeah. And it's a great experience to mingle with those filmmakers yeah. from all over the world. Now, you've been accepted. Now what? And this yeah. is, do you bring your lawyer? Do you? <laughs> you know, it depends on the film festival. I would say if you're going to Cannes or Berlin or Toronto or Sundance, it would be very good to make sure you have a little bit of a team. If you have a film in one of those festivals, a publicist, a lawyer, uh, you know, because you're wanting to sell distribution. And you want yeah. as much support around you as you can yeah. you know, to help out yeah. there and talk up your film. So, yes, but the other thing is bringing cast members, you know, especially if you have anyone of note, you might want that one, yeah. one notable cast member with you because that will garner publicity and attention, and that's basically how do you stand yeah. out from the pack. Now, you've been accepted, but you're not living in Hollywood. You're not living in New York. You're living in Oshkosh. How do you get on television there that will be noticed? Well, that's one of the, that's that's one of the things that I think is really important for filmmakers to know is that once you've been accepted, you should call the local radio station, call the local um, uh, newspaper, and send them an EPK, you know, an electronic press kit, 
and you know just really do some footwork to get yourself in front of the media there so they'll so they will showcase you most yeah. most um, uh, smaller town festivals in particular mm -hmm. have uh, their own little networks and yeah. their own the newspapers and newspapers whether they're online or they're uh, you know in print hopefully still remaining in print yeah. uh, they they're hungry for material so if you go come out with a great press release that you've written about your film yeah. they may just print it verbatim because they're hungry for material or or in the case of a, a, an interview show like this, mm -hmm. for example, yeah. you could find someone who does a show, a weekly show or whatever on one of those stations, who's also hungry for new guests and say, I'm going to be there early. I can do it, yeah. uh, a, 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 an appearance for you. Or a radio show. There's yeah. radios, local radio stations everywhere that have interview format shows. And uh, they're, everyone's hungry for good stories. And, mm -hmm. And if it's a good film or a good premise for film, it's going to be easy to talk and about. And don't personally. forget, there's something called the internet. The internet, website, absolutely, Web, Facebook, blogging, Twitter, Twitter, blogging. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and that's another thing a filmmaker needs to do too, is to keep uh, engaging their audience even that way. But this is also the money, the money, the money. What's it going to cost to sort of submit your new film? It sort of depends on the festival. Yeah, you I mean, have it could be anywhere here. from thirty-five dollars yeah. up to a hundred dollars, depending yeah. on the film festival. So, I mean, it's best to get in as the early bird deadline rate. Yeah, and you better remember that uh, it, networking is king. Absolutely, networking yeah. is absolutely king, and there's so many ways to do it because we always say that there's more than just one goal when it comes to a film festival for the filmmaker. If you're a writer, you might want to find that wonderful director or yeah. producer. And if you're uh, the director, you want to find material. So you want to meet up with writers, mm -hmm. or you want to meet that producer yeah. that might see your vision. It, it will be hard for the camera to pick up, but there is a page here about what you need to check off in submitting to the festival. Correct, yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to talk a little bit about that, or yeah? I mean, it's yeah. the um, uh, the the checklist there, and what we have is um, you want the the name of the film festival, and then you want to have the date of the festival, and then the deadline dates, yeah. and then you know be able to target which what what, the, what dates, what film festivals, yeah. what film festival you may want to try to premiere at. And also, you want to look at the late uh, deadlines, the early deadlines. Each one yeah. costs a little more as you get closer to the festival. So you do want to try and get it in on the early deadline to save money. But you also want to look and see what time of the year those festivals are, because you do have to plan, as Monica said, do certain festivals require yeah. a premiere. Yeah. And that means strategy. So yeah. you have to create a strategy for yourself when it comes to film There's festivals. There's also which of these thousand <laughs> festivals are you going to submit to? Yeah, the Academy of Qualifying Film Festivals is a great way to target your first tier of film festivals because if you win mm. one of the, win at an Academy Qualifying Film Festival, then your film festival will have the opportunity to go into a pool to be considered for the Oscars. Do you know I never that knew that till I read film. this? For, this is for short film. Yeah. yeah. So that was really amazing. The other is when you have submitted um, have you looked at where winners of that festival have gone after? Oh. Did anybody buy their film? Yes, most of them. Most of them do get bought. Um, short films uh, have a harder time in the United States of distribution, but they do get distribution as interstitials on, uh, like, the Sundance Channel and IFP, mm -hmm. uh, IFC, I should say, not IFP. Yeah. Uh, it's another organization. Airlines. <laughs> no, IFP is. No, no, I mean. But, but yeah, and airlines as well. Yes, and yeah. but in in Europe and in Asia. In in particular, uh, short film is very king. Uh, they get uh, programmed a lot all over broadcast television. They get uh, programmed before feature films as well in movie theaters. Really? So you can you're, actually you're make teaching. a little bit of money. Yeah, you're teaching in Singapore. I am teaching at Chapman University, Singapore, correct. Yeah. Uh, 